It's October, it's that time of the year to turn on the heating system. What do you do? What is your routine? Do you go around? Do you fill the radiators? Do you bleed them with your bleed key? Let me show you what I'm going to do and we're going to use this thermal imaging camera which is really going to speed up the process for me. Well first things first, we've got to open up the app, turn this valent heat pump on and get some warmth into the radiators. As you can see, right now, it's 17.9 degrees outside, 19.4 in here, and the heat pump will not be warming up our radiators. So we're gonna have to do some overriding just to check the system out. Let's force it, okay? So we're gonna click on zone one here, and I'm gonna bump this up, and I'm just gonna bump this up nice and high, because we wanna get the radiators nice and hot very quickly. 25 degrees, it's gonna tell us that it's gonna be doing that for three hours, but we'll override that in a minute. I'm going to go down here to heat curve settings and uh, our outdoor temperature switch off threshold is currently 18 degrees. I'm going to bump that up to 19 because I do not want this to turn off. Ooh, I just heard some clicking, some valves. Let's start in the airing cupboard. I open the airing cupboard door and straight away I can hear it's running. The pump is on. I can touch it with my hand just about feel that it's running. At the moment, pipe's very cool. Flick back onto the app and go to status. I can see that. The actual flow temperature at the moment, 18.5 degrees. Let's give it a few minutes. Whilst the heating system is kicking into gear, let me show you which device we're using. So this is on the upper end. This is a bit more premium than the previous thermal imaging cameras I featured on the channel. It's called the Thor. Hmm, can you guess where they have got that name from? Are you worthy to wield a device like this? And uh, it packs a lot more of a punch than the previous devices for many reasons. Even just looking at the front, you can see there's a few more sensors on there. It's got a bigger screen, much clearer resolution, a lot more responsive on the buttons, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's got lots of bells and whistles. I'll put a link to the spec sheet. Uh, you can read that for yourself. I have been really impressed with how clear it looks on this screen. And I'm keen to see how that comes out after we wh whack this into some video editing and you see it on some bigger screens. It's got a bit more heft to it. It's got a tripod mount. This is definitely aimed more at a professional market. Also comes with a proper case as well. So I know there's plenty of heating engineers out there that you watch my channel just to laugh at us DIY you know, people who know nothing. But uh, if you don't have one of these, maybe this is something worth considering. If you're a DIYer, Thermal Master probably has some products that would just do the job perfectly for you without paying a slightly more premium price tag for this one. If you do want to see anything in particular of this, then let me know in the comments. I'll produce a YouTube short about particular features or details that you are interested in seeing. Well, that's been five minutes already. That is enough for the flow temperature to be raised up to about 23 degrees, according to the Valent app and in the radiators, it's looking like 22 degrees. Let's go and have a little walk around the house then, shall we? You can see that radiator is working. And what I'm looking for is at the top here, I want it to be consistently warm across the top because typically, if you get any air locks, any air bubbles, then the radiator won't be completely filled with water and you won't get heat in throughout the top of the radiator. So let's go and see if we can find a radiator that does need bleeding and may have a little air in the top. Now the interesting thing is, you can see how warm my hand is. So at the moment, these radiators, they're still cool to the touch. Um, they're not warm, but with the thermal imaging camera, you can already see that they are warming up compared to their surroundings. Right, in the study, I was wondering what that was, but that's one of our little Wi-Fi routers, okay? This radiator, nice, constant throughout. Yeah, nice and constant, that's what we're looking for. Excellent. We'll come back to that and we will have a closer look a bit later on. Now we do have a radiator here in the garage and now that I've fitted these home storage batteries over here, I am gonna warm this garage, I'm gonna heat this garage. 
And although that may seem like a bit of a waste, uh, this does attach onto the rest of the house, so it's not a complete waste. Um, and it will give us some more system volume as well, which helps to reduce cycling, gives us that kind of thermal mass and thermal inertia within the system. Okay, let's open up this lock shield and we're gonna see how quickly it can do this. That was a million turns on that lock shield. And you can see how quickly that radiator is opening up. Excellent. Yeah, straight away. Excellent. Right, let's go check the rest of the system. We'll come back and check on the garage in a bit. Ah, now we can see in the air and cupboard, the pump is warm. Oh yeah, that's warm to the touch now. And the thermal imaging camera is saying about 27 degrees, that flow temperature must be. That radiator looks nice and consistent in the, in the kids' bathroom. Woo! Yep, that one's looking good. Nice. Ah, the son that always turns his TRV down. Let's turn that back up. Very satisfying. You can see how quickly that's letting some of the flow in. Aha, well this son has got his TRV on. Good, we've got a little bit of patchiness, but we haven't given it very much time to warm up, and this is one of the furthest radiators on the loop. Okay, this one looks like it needs bleeding, doesn't it? Wow. And that radiator there is normally turned off because I sleep this side of the bed and it always gets too warm for me. Oh, towel on the towel rail. Let's pop that off. Hmm. Looks like we could do some bleeding up here as well. Let's go and get the bleed key. Ah, this was the one that wasn't on a minute ago. Well, that garage one is looking good. That should keep my motorcycle and my batteries nice and warm. Now, professional plumbers and heating engineers, you guys go ahead and correct me. But uh, my experience has typically been that uh, the highest radiators on the system quite often are the ones that get the air in them. The downstairs rads don't normally need much bleeding. The air finds its way up to the top of the system. I guess there's lots of variables that that can depend upon. So let's do this now. Hopefully you can hear that. That's it. There's a good chunk of air in there. You can see already it flowing up to the top. Let's go and do the towel rail. Just still not warm at the top. On this side. Maybe you can hear that. Wow, it didn't look like a lot. Um, 
and they look like a small strip at the top. But that took a lot of bleeding to get all of that air out. What are you thinking so far? Is this the way to deal with your heating system turn on? Oh, now I can hear a bit of I can hear a bit of airflow. What's the uh, system pressure looking like? Yeah, because we've bleed, bled out so much air, we're down to one bar, which is not terrible, but we're going to top that up to about one and a half bar. There we go. Topped up, up back up to one and a half bar. Let's give a final check over now. We've got the flow temperature up at 33 degrees. Excellent. That rad looks perfect. This was the one that was off, looking good. Nice. I can still hear a few air bubble noises in the system. This one's looking good now. Let me just go ahead and turn this on just in case, because this one might need bleeding as well. So I've just turned that on at the TRV. Let's give one last scout around. We'll come back to this. And now with the flow temperature in the 30 degrees, I can start to feel that the radiators are warm to the touch. You know, that one's good. Nice. Ah. Oh. Completely forgot about the downstairs uh, toilet one, but that looks pretty good. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Happy with that. I'm going to turn that TRV back off. Don't want to be cooking while I'm sleeping. What do you think then? Is a device like this really helpful for when you're getting your system back on? Do you think that you could also use this to effectively balance your system? Because coming to the channel soon, I'm going to show you some different devices that may be even better for accurately balancing the system. This is a great visual check of the radiators though. As always, thanks to Thermal Master for providing this tool. I've checked it out. It's better than the other ones that I've tried in the past, but it is more expensive. So you would expect it to deliver a more premium performance. As always, Thermal Master have prepared a discount code for my viewers. That will be down in the description. You can find the link to buying one of these as well as a discount code. Thank you for everyone that's watched. Let me know. Do you just walk around with a bleed key and uh, a towel or do you have a slightly more advanced method? Are you a professional? Are you a home DIYer? And uh, what would be your tips for the rest of these people? Read in the comments in the world of YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.